Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday and Tuesday, and we're about to bring the word. I hope it blesses your heart. God has a warning for the world and those that give him no regard, but he has a blessing for those that do, that love him, that follow him, that obey him, that pursue him, that seek him, his people, his remnant. They're going to be blessed in spite of what's going on. I looked up the word. I was in the dictionary. <laughs> I'm a dictionary person because I like to get every, I like to, to milk a word and get everything out of it. When we say God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Listen, I looked up the word refuge. Refuge incorporates shelter protection, sanctuary, hiding place, the list goes on. And once we get how much of a protection God is and how much he lives up to his covenant, he's not the one who breaks his word, we are. And when God says he's got us, he'll protect us. In famine, you shall be fed. In famine, you shall be satisfied. Satisfied is not barely getting by. When things are going tilt and things are going helter-skelter all over the world, all over in one city, from one city to the next, from one riot to the next, whatever the issue is, whether it's corona or racial violence, whatever the issue is, you have to understand that if God says it, that settles it. And God promises to take care of his people. But from the scriptures he's given me, I believe this is the year of exposure. God will expose, reprove, penalize, and judge those that have gotten away with murder for decades and centuries whether it's you and your grandpapa and your great-grandpapa and been in the same ring, whatever the case is, God's getting ready to toe the line on your behind. Isaiah chapter 3, starting at verse 1. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Isn't that happening now? Been happening. And the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler. Let this ruin be under thy hand. In that in that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people, for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Listen, you guys. These are the enemies of God, the staunch enemies of God. The ones that tell God, talk to the hand, I don't want you, your Holy Ghost, I don't want no parts of you. I'm going to do this my way. All right. Now, when it says that they declare their sin as Sodom, you ever hear people say, I'm explaining it real quick. You ever hear people say, oh, honey, I'm going to hell. I'm going to party my way all the way to hell. Mm -hmm. 
and they and and they make a big joke out of it. And they're high fiving and low fiving and all kind of stuff, elbowing each other, cracking up, laughing, making a joke out of eternal misery because they don't really believe it. They don't really get it. They think it ends right here, but they're going to be sadly mistaken when that trunk blows. They're going to be sadly mistaken. And the sad part is they flaunt it like Sodom and Gomorrah. They flaunt their sin. There is no shame. As they used to say in the streets, ain't no shame to my game, baby. Yeah, it's going to be some shame, baby, when God gets through doing something with you. Yeah. Now listen. Verse 9. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin. Ain't no shame. Yeah. They declare their sin and hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, this is for us, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. It's like you made your bed, baby, and you going to lie in it. That's what that said. You're going to pay the piper. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment and the ancients of his people and the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Mm. What mean ye? Oh, now they, I'm telling you, this is, you guys have no idea how up to here God is, how fed up he is with the oppression of the people that have no, no voice, the oppression of the people that are poor, needy, sick, weak, Oh, you have no idea how that breaks God's heart, how that, that enangers him. I made that up in anger. Okay. So listen, verse 15, this is what he asked those of you who have been living rich off the blood of the poor. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? saith the Lord God of hosts. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. I know some of you don't really get what that means. So let me break that down real quick. That's the attitude. There's a lot of arrogance in the church. There are a lot of people in the church that aren't going to make it no closer to heaven than the sinners are. Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. depart from me, baby. I never knew you. So a lot of them, the mincing and the haughtiness and the stretch neck and all of that, picture a woman strolling down the street as if she is God's gift to the world. And she's got all her expensive jewelry dangling on her wrist and her ears and her neck and on her ankles. And she's just tinkling as she goes. And she's taking stride after stride as if she's saying to the world, world, take notice of me. I am here to make your day. Well, that's an attitude of arrogance that a lot of people in church let me, let me break that one down. Some of you who go to church, you've seen this. You see the first lady come uh, fashionably late. And she's spangled and dangled with all kind of rhinestones and hats that are a mile wide. Right? And she's, she thinks she is decked to the nine. And she strolls in the same way. Now, here's the trick. Right after service, she could be cussing some of the women out. 
She could be cussing her husband out. But she cute. She thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. Some people always come in fashionably late. I've seen it. I've watched it. They, they, I mean, drop dead gorgeous, deck to the nines from head to toe. That's cool. But what they do with it, they're drawing attention to themselves by strolling in late. So everybody has to take notice of what they have on. Oh, look at that Gucci bag. Oh, look at those shoes. Woo! Girlfriend is tough today. Oh, I wish I looked like her. Yeah. You don't realize the pride and arrogance that's in the church. And those very same women will raise their hands to give glory to God. No, they're giving glory to themselves. When they raise their hands to praise God, see, people don't realize how subtle those motives are. When they raise their hands to praise God, they're raising their hands and say, y'all take notice of me. Check out my pretty watch. I just got it. And they'll make sure they raise the hand with the pretty watch. They'll make sure they raise the hand that's got all the diamond rings on it. You don't realize I see it all. I've seen it. I, it's so obvious. And if you told them that's what they were doing, they, 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 uh, they'd be mortified that you would even think such a thing. Yeah, but it's obvious. Real obvious. You see, even see it on their face. Well, see, this is what God says about that. Because, you know, God, uh, one of the seven things God hates, pride is one of them. And pride is a, is a common denominator for arrogance. All right, listen to this. Uh, <laughs> verse 17. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. This is judgment time, y'all. We are in a season of judgment, exposure, penalties. You do not want to be on the wrong side of the track in this season at all. Hmm. All right. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. The crown represents their, their bigness, their importance, their oh, affluence, their, you know, all the attention they get. All right. All right. Crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Oops, whoops, whoops, there it is. I said, whoops, there it is. What that is saying is you're looking at a woman and she's coming out looking like she's decked to the nine. This is a picture. It's an allegory, you guys. Check it out. This is for everybody who is arrogant in the body of Christ, let alone the sinners that are arrogant and prideful and haughty. So you've got these women or men, same thing. You got these women. It's just that spirit that goes with that. They're dead to the nine. Sometimes you see a man is more manicured than a woman could ever be. Woo! But the Lord says, when he gets sick and tired of you, baby cakes, it's going to be like somebody came and pulled your skirt all the way up to show your dirty drawers. Or like pulling your pants down for everybody to see your dirty drawers. What that means is that God is getting ready to do some serious exposing right in through now. You know, the Bible says, check this out. He who covers his sin will be exposed. He who exposes his sins, who admits and confesses his sins, will be hidden. They will be covered. Their reputation will be protected, right? But those that cover, when God gets through with you, baby, you're going to wish you were dead. Everybody's going to be laughing and quack quack and whizzy whizzy and, and and cutting their eye at you and, whoa, looking down at you. And, I mean, you, you become a big joke when God gets through with you. You thought you were a big deal, a big bag of chips. No, God's going to make you a big joke. That's the season we're in right now. I'm trying to keep it. I'm, I'm trying not to get too dramatic because I know how I can get. I want, I want to paint the picture. I want to get the point across so you can really see what God is doing. See, in this season, you're going to start seeing 
politicians being arrested, handcuffed, taken to jail, going to court, and some of them doing much time. You're going to see class action lawsuits coming up. I do believe this could be the season of laying up for the, laying up for the, laying up the wealth of the wicked for the just. I believe this could be that kind of season because when people start getting exposed and they start seeing all the dirt people been doing for decades and getting away with it and attorneys start coming up with class action suits. Folks going to start getting sued up the yin-yang. And you're going to start seeing some people, some of the poorest, getting the reward that they've been long overdue for being, for being done so wrong for so long. All right. Let's keep going. This is the kind of season we're in. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their cowls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. In other words, all your trinkets, all your, your glory, your pretty cars, your pretty mansions, your pretty stuff, all the things that made you who you think you are today, who they think you are, ripped out right from under you. That's right. He'll take it away. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be a stink. That's the day we're living in right now, you guys. You're going to see it. And instead of a girdle, a wrench, a rip. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girdle of sackcloth. And the burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. And a gate shall lament and mourn and she being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. Picture, picture me or anybody. No, picture somebody who's drop-dead gorgeous. Young, drop-dead gorgeous, dressed to the nine, got the Mercedes, got the Lexus, got the Lamborghini, got the mansion that's, you know, what, uh, 30,000 square feet, you know, I mean, got the whole nine yards. They got everything and the bag of chips, all at their fingertips, all within reach. And they're sitting on the ground, nothing on them. They're not, not looking pretty, no makeup, no hair. They're bald, their dress is up, and they're sitting on the ground with their legs open, looking like a baby that messed up in their diaper, crying and wailing. Picture that. The shame. The humiliation. See, people have played games with society for too long. God's going to start back at you, y'all. He's going to start doing it right back to them. People are going to start paying penalties they never thought they'd ever have to pay because they thought they were exempt of the law. They thought they were exempt of penalties. But God's got a payday that'll fry some behinds in a way that nobody will even want to look on it. Nobody will even want to think about how bad that turned out. They'll start feeling sorry for the people that have been oppressing them because how bad God's going to come down. So I ask you, whatever you do in this life, right here and now, this is the season to draw close to God. I don't care how strong you believe. I don't care how weak your belief is. I don't care how strong your doubt is. The bottom line is stay close to God no matter what. Stay close to him. If you wouldn't recognize him, if he jumped up and hugged you, 
Stay close to him the best way you can with what little you know. Ask God to constantly have mercy on your soul. Now, here's the key to mercy. You want mercy from God, right? You want God to be of tender mercies, understanding, long patient with you. You don't want him to deal with you after the sins you've committed, right? So you're asking him for mercy, for time, to, for help. This is what you do. Here's the magic key. I always call it the magic key to receiving mercy and living a life loaded with his mercy. It basically obligates him to his word. His word says to the merciful, I will be merciful. His word also says, blessed are the merciful in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain, what? Mercy. You want to get the most amount of mercy you can from God? You cry, you fight, you do whatever you've got to do to become a merciful person. At all costs, be merciful. Be merciful. If you need, you need to up your game on mercy right in through here. In the season of judgment, baby, you better show all the mercy you can. I'm serious. Even those of you who are unsaved, who haven't decided to give your heart to the Lord yet, show mercy. You want mercy? Show mercy. And ask God to give you the time you need to make up your mind. But show mercy. Listen. The kind of time we're in right now. We just got through praying before I started bringing the word. About human trafficking victims. We have no idea the kind of things they have done. You know what came to my mind when I was praying to the Lord yesterday? What came to my mind is orphanages. Orphanages, it has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Orphanages are for kids who don't have mothers and fathers and don't have anyone to take care of them. What a nice thing. But what came to my mind is there are orphanages out there that are treacherously selling some of these orphans off to human trafficking. God, stop that. Stop them dead in their tracks in the name of Jesus. We have no idea the treacherous doings that are going on, the things that people are actually capable of doing, sacrificing, kidnapping women and men and children, kidnapping them and sacrificing them to the devil. The stuff that people do to people while they're alive, they torture them to death and they have no guilt. It doesn't touch them. It, you just have no idea what God's going to do in this season. It's going to get very, very severe. Now, I pray the Lord does not allow God to, <laughs> that the Lord does not allow himself <clears throat> to come down on the whole country, but that he will focus his anger, his wrath, and his judgment on the perpetrators that are in the Illuminati, the government, the politicians, the powers that be the money makers and the money shakers, the money changers, all of these guys that are in control of the world economics, that 1%. Yeah, I'm asking God and all the principalities that are working amongst them, all the evil demonic powers that are working and that they're working with, I pray to God pulls that down and brings such severe judgment 
that when he gets through shaking them, all their little money comes trickling down to us and we benefit. In a season of judgment, we prosper. Now you heard what God said, didn't you? To his people, tell my people, it shall be well with them. So don't you fear, because he said it right there. It shall be well with you and me. It shall be well with us, y'all. We have no need to fear. Now I'm going to go to Psalms 46, and I'm going to close with that. God is our refuge. There's that word refuge again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help present help y'all a present help not coming tomorrow not next year a very present help in trouble therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof no matter how many earthquakes we have there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She, that's you and me, shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. See, he can stop a war dead in his tracks. He breaketh the bow. Boop! Now you don't have anything to hurt anybody with. And he cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. You see a million chariots out there coming at us? Oh, all of a sudden they're on fire. Oh, well. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God bless you. Be encouraged. God is for us, not against us. If God be for you, who can be against you? Psalms 27. We'll read a few verses in that. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And that rock is Jesus. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now is a good time. Rashad is going to sing, and I pray this blesses your soul, and that will be the close of our message. God bless you. Thank you, Rashad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. I live my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. 
I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. I lift my hands in total admiration to you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can say to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. You were my shelter from the storm when all my friends were gone. You were right there all alone. I never known a love like this before. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I don't know how many of you really love him today. I love him with my whole heart, my mind, and my soul. Everything that is within me, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Woo. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I Amen. love him too. He fir- <laughs> I love him because he first loved me. And I'm telling you. Breathing is so much better now. Thank God. Thank God, See, Rashad. You sound, you sound really good, Rashad. Yes. You sound really good, really good. That's the longest he's ever sung without stopping. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Rashad, for doing that. 